What's up guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be recreating this really cool bokeh animation. It's really easy to make and I'm going to walk you through it step by step. But first I just want to thank all of my Patreons for supporting me. So yeah, massive thank you to anyone who's supported me through there. It really means a lot to me, so yeah, I can't thank you enough. If you are interested in supporting me through Patreon, there is a link in the description. Supporters will gain access to all sorts of exclusive benefits, like project files for my weekly BJ loops and all sorts of other uh, perks. Uh, but enough rambling, let's get on with the tutorial. So once you've got Blender open, we're just going to start with a fresh scene. Delete the default cube, add a little space for my camera quickly. So we deleted the default cube. Let's add an icosphere. So we're going to hit Shift A, add mesh, we'll add icosphere. This is going to be the object that we emit the bokeh effect onto. So we're going to click on our icosphere. We're going to hit S and then 8. So we just scale it up quite large because we're going to pop the camera inside. Click on this camera and we're going to hit Alt G which resets the location and then we're going to hit Alt R which resets the rotation so it's facing down and we're just going to hit G and then Z just to bring it up on the Z axis so it's just touching the top so you can see it here uh, maybe bring it down a little bit five to six meters high I think is good you can hit zero to look through your camera but what we're going to do is add another icosphere so we're going to hit shift A add another mesh we'll add another icosphere but this one we're going to actually drop the subdivisions to one just because we're going to be using this as a sort of particle essentially a particle which we're going to instance onto the vertices of this other icosphere so we don't need a lot of vertices on this object because of the bokeh effects we're trying to achieve it's going to blur it all so this is good news if you've got quite a weak computer because you should have no trouble rendering this so we're going to click on this one and we're just going to rename it to ico particle and we're just going to move that out of the way so just select it hit g y to move it out of the scene doesn't really matter where it is but because the master object we're not going to be rendering we're just going to be rendering instances of it and we're going to actually be using geometry nodes to achieve this so if you click on your icosphere go to our modifiers add modifier and we're going to add a geometry nodes modifier you need this in order to start uh, editing using geometry nodes so we'll add a new uh, instance of geometry nodes and we're gonna go to the top right here and just drag a new window in and we'll change this to geometry node editor just hit n on your keyboard so you get rid of that menu there and we've got our input and our output so it's just obviously the same geometry uh, nothing going on just yet but what we want to do is basically find a node that will reference this object to basically instance it along all of these vertices and it's actually really easy. All you've got to do is this icosphere selected, click on the ico particle and drag it in. And it's going to actually create everything for you. So it's going to create an object info node. Uh, and it's already referenced this ico particle here. So that's really handy. It saves you having to do this manually. So you can just drag and drop it into the geometry nodes editor. But we need to find a way to instance it. And the way we do that is hit shift A, go to search and add instance on points that's the node you want so we're going to pop that in between there so the geometry goes into the points and then the instances goes out to the geometry again to the group output you're going to notice that our icosphere has disappeared that's what we want so we want there to be no geometry so that's good now all we need to do is just feed this object info to the instance so you grab the geometry plug that in to the instance and now you can see it's instancing those icospheres on all of the vertices of your main icosphere. But you'll notice it's really, really large and we don't really want to work with something like that. So what you can do is actually adjust the scaling here. And if you want to easily uniformly adjust it, you can just hit Shift A, search for a value node and just plug that in there. Now everything's gone because the value is set to zero. So you can just pump this up. And if you hold Shift, it allows you to more precisely adjust the values so I think around one looks good so we'll hit zero so we can look into our camera and there you can see we are seeing these icospheres so that's looking pretty good I think we should just widen up the focal length of the camera a bit so select your camera and let's change the focal length to eight I think eight looks good just save your work we're going to go into render mode now so hit z8 to go into render mode and we're going to start shading this scene. So, so if you go to the world settings here, let's change the world to black. Select our light that came with the default file. If you haven't got a light, just hit Shift A and add one. Just add a point light. But we're going to click on the one that we've already got and just hit Alt G just to reset the location of the light. 
I'm going to take my overlays off as well, just so I can see the scene, how it should be without all those grid lines. Select my light, bring this up on the Z axis a bit. So we're not getting all those shadows. So pop the light about there. Looks good around four. And now we can start shading particles. So we can't do any shading on this object because obviously the mesh disappeared. That's the object we need to start shading. So select your Ico particle, go to this bit here. We're going to change this to the shader editor. We'll add a new material slot and we'll just call this particle. And I just want to add a bit of color variation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down to black. Actually, before I do any of this, I'm going to go to, so I'll bring that down to black, mix this shader with an emission shader. So I'm going to hit shift A, uh, add a mix node, shift A, add a mix node, add a mix shader, and we'll just pop that there. So what this does, is it lets you blend between two different shaders. So if we've got it all the way on the left, you see it's this white one. If you bring it all the way to the right, it just goes black because there's nothing plugged into the, to the uh, other input. So we'll hit shift A, add an emission shader, plug that into this part here. So now we can blend the two together. I'm going to actually make this um, principle be BSDF. I'm going to make that fully black. On the emission strength, I'm going to make this quite strong. I'll make it like 50. And with the strength, we want to add a bit of bloom as well to the scene. So you can't do that here. You need to actually go to the scene settings. And we're using Eevee for this. Check bloom, which is going to create a sort of glow effect. Uh, it's obviously very overpowering. So I like to bring that down a bit to around here. We'll add screen space reflections as well and motion blur. Now that we've done that, let's start controlling this this a bit more. So I want to just have, I only want the emission to come on the edges of these uh, objects. So what I'm going to do is hit shift A. I'm going to add a layer weight node. If you use this facing plug and plug that into the fact, what it basically does, it sort of creates like a toon shader. It sort of outlines the, uh, it sort of creates a gradient that follows uh, where the camera is. So normally if you like orbit around an object uh, and you had a gradient texture, you would see like it's split between. Uh, with this, it's sort of, I changed the blend to 0.25 and it, it's, it's quite hard to notice at the moment, but if we crunch, if we use a color ramp, we can just get a bit more control over this. So we'll add a color ramp and we'll just bring that in. So as you see, if I bring that black value in, only adding the emission to the edges and it sort of follows around when you orbit. So we'll do that and we'll bring this white one up a bit as well, just to get a bit more of that glow. So yeah, let's, let's add a bit more variation in color. Uh, to this so the color is all really coming from the emission shader go we'll hit shift a we're going to add a color ramp plug that into the color i'm going to make this one a sort of nice blue i think something like that just a light blue we'll bring this in and we'll add, we'll add a few more of these uh sliders so just keep hitting that plus button until you get a few and we'll change the colors of some of these so maybe make that one red i don't know i might change my mind about this later uh, but at the moment, I think I might have added too many sliders. You don't need that many. Just give it a bit of variation. And we're going to plug a, a noise texture into this. And this is going to basically split all of these colors and sort of, it's going to use a texture created by this uh, to sort of assign colors to parts of the object. So we'll plug the fact into the fact. It should, you should see, you can kind of see on the object. If we zoom into the object, you can kind of see what it's doing. It's adding a bit of variation of color. Uh, quite hard to notice when you've got this all the way. Let's see if we pump, if we get rid of that. What I would do, I'll get rid of the detail. So there's a lot more contrast and saturation. You can play with the scale of your uh, noise texture as well. I think now is a good time to get those bokeh effects. So I'll bring that black value back in again and let's add those bokeh effects. So we're going to click on the camera and we'll go to the camera settings here and let's add depth of field. And we need to expand this menu a bit. We don't need to focus on an object. We're just going to do it by distance. So we'll bring the distance down and you should start to see these bokers come through. And you can also play around with the f-stop to get um, a bit more control over how you want your bokers to look. So yeah, just get it how you like it. We'll play around with this a bit more in a bit, but I think we can start animating. What you could do is click on your icosphere and we're just going to do a simple animation of it rotating. Uh, you can do any axis you want, whatever you like, but that's going to be the loop. So I quite like it on the X, X and the Y, it will sort of go like wavy looking, but I'm just going to do one on the X. So I'm going to add a keyframe on the first frame. I'm going to hold shift and then hit the right arrow. I'm just going to add a keyframe on the first frame. What I need to do as well is just go to my scene settings. I want to change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and the end is going to be 300. 
So that's a 10 second loop. So go back to the icosphere and onto the properties here. Uh, yeah, so we've added that keyframe on the first frame, put our mouse in the timeline. We'll hold shift, hit right arrow. Uh, so you go to the end frame and then hit right arrow again uh, with shift let go that time. So just the right arrow. So you go to 301 and we're gonna change the X axis to 360 and we'll add a keyframe 360 degrees. Now with the mouse hovered over the timeline, and the reason why we add the keyframe to 301 is because if you don't, you'll end up rendering out a duplicate frame. So if you're trying to loop an animation, you need to give yourself an extra keyframe to work with because if you just did it to this 300 frame, it'd be the exact same as the first frame. And what that's going to do, it'll basically, when you watch the animation, it will look like it's slightly stuttering. So the loop won't look really clean. It'll be barely noticeable, but when, when you notice it, it's really annoying. And that's normally what the issue is. So yeah, just make sure you always give yourself an extra frame to work with if, you, if you're working with loops. So yeah, with that done, mouse hovered over the timeline again, we're gonna hit A and then T, change the interpolation to linear. And what that does, it just makes sure that the animation constantly moves and doesn't accelerate and decelerate as it comes to the end. So so that's that. I'm gonna go back to my Ico particle and just, uh, just gonna make a few changes. I think I want it to be a bit more pink. Something like that I think looks cool. And let's just render out a frame. We're just gonna render out one frame. So hit F12 and that's given us one frame to work with because we're going to do some compositing just to make it look a bit better. So go to composite in here, select use nodes. We're going to hit N on the keyboards just to get rid of that menu and we'll hit shift A. We'll search for viewer. This is going to allow us to see our rendered image. Now hold shift and the right mouse button. I'm just going to drag that down so we can join the nodes together and we'll hit shift A and we're going to add a filter node. That's going to what we're going to use one of these filter algorithms. I like the Kirsch one. It sort of gives it really hard edges. Uh, yeah, sort of brightens up the edges a bit. So we're going to blend this in with the dry signal. Maybe just keep it 50-50. Sorry, not, 50, not like that. Uh, <laughs> so maybe like 0.5, just so you sort of get a bit of a blend between the two. You can also hit Shift A and add a lens distortion, which I think looks cool. So just pump the dispersion up to about two. Just gives that sort of chromatic aberration around the edges sort of like a vignette a glitchy kind of vignette so that's all the compositing done i think it just makes it look a little bit cooler so just save your work and yeah that's pretty much it only the thing left to do is to render it out but i want to show you some variations you can do you can make some really cool different designs uh, really easily without really changing much so what you can do is one thing you can do if you're not getting any bokers just play around again with the focus distance and the f-stop and just play around to your taste i think that looks quite good might make them a little bit smaller so yeah that's one way you can change it just by obviously zooming in a little bit um another thing you can do you can actually go to your icosphere the main one the one with the the one with the geometry nodes you can actually add a subdivision surface modifier and just pop that on top and what that's going to do it's going to give you more vertices which will then in effect populate it even more so that will give you even more bokers. So it'll give you this sort of dreamy effect here that you're seeing. And again, you can either zoom in. But one thing to notice with this is you need to make sure you're, um, basically if it's not looking how you expect it to look, it's because the viewport is given one subdivision and the render is given two. So just make sure they're both set to one. That will fix any issues you're having with it not looking consistent with what's in the viewport when you render it out. So that's another thing you can do. It just gives you more uh, bokers to work with with just a couple of clicks. And then of course, uh, you can go back to your camera, just change the um, settings a bit if you don't like it like that. But yeah, I'm gonna render out these uh, animations and we'll see how they look. But yeah, only thing left to do now is to render them out. If you go to your output properties here, actually go to the this bit here, your scene settings. I just wanna change the color management to very high contrast. So I'm just gonna go to the scene settings here. And we're going to change the output, just save it somewhere you can find it. Really, you should render out as image sequences. Uh, the reason being, the reason being, if your render crashes, you can just pick up where you left off. But it's not really a complex scene in a way, and I want to see the file now. So I'm going to render it straight to video. So we're going to change the file format to FFmpeg video. Change the container to MP4. Video codec H.264. Output quality, perceptually lossless. All you got to do is go to render render animation and you're done okay guys thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you learned something please leave a like and subscribe it really helps me grow the channel 
and consider supporting me on Patreon if you do find value in the content I put out. Uh, your support means a lot to me and helps me make this my full-time job. And if you've got some spare time, feel free to check out my website where you can find more of my work. You can also find Blender project files, uh, more tutorials and music I make as well. So yeah, feel free to check that out. You can find that all at nevmotion.co.uk.